We're going to go right into it, ladies and gentlemen. Our first guest is the three-time Tony Award nominee and winner of the prestigious Drama Desk Award, whose first major role was on the big screen playing Michael, the gay teen who wears a dress to his prom, gets beaten up by his classmates in the 2003 musical geek cult film uh, classic uh, Camp, which is where Kenny and I first saw him and fell in love with him. And then he went on to play the role of uh, Sonny in Lynn manuel Miranda's 2008 In the Heights, for which he was nominated as a Best Featured Actor in a uh, musical. In 2010, he played sassy housemaid Jacob in a uh, Broadway revival of La Casha Full, earning him his second Tony Award nomination in the Featured Actor category. He also starred in Broadway productions of Rent and Wicked. And in 2019, he received his third Featured Actor in a Musical Tony Award nomination for his performance in the all-star cast production of the boys in the band. He is fiercely proud of his Puerto Rican heritage, and rumor has it he might be just a teensy bit gay and willing to lend his support and talents to all the right causes. With all of these accomplishments and fierceness, he still manages to be one of the most down-to-earth, loving, and lovable stars in the Broadway community. Please say hello to Robin DeHasty. Yay! Yay. <laughs> hello, Robin. What up? What an introduction, right? <laughs> I'm just it's a tiny also bit gay. Accurate, except the tiny bit gay. <laughs> <laughs> tiny bit. It just, I, I work off of ratios. It depends on the day, you know. Well, Tim, so oh. you've only recently discovered this. And we'll have to teach her about ratios. <laughs> Still in the coming out process. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, well, thank you for joining us. Um, Pleasure. How's, how is it going? Where are you, where are you hold up at? It's bizarre. I mean, I, I'm very fortunate. So I feel like my, my awareness of that makes this a little more, um, and more tolerable, but I'm in Hell's Kitchen. Uh, I was apartment hunting when all this went down, and I I couldn't find a place. My broker was like, "There's there's nothing for us to look at because no one's allowed to." Luckily, a friend of mine she uh, she lives in Connecticut, but she has an extra place in the city. And she said to me, she goes, you know what? Just like stay at my place. I'm not touching New York. If anything, you comfort me by letting me know someone's taking care of my place. And so I wake up every day. To oh, this no. gorgeous view of, oh, wow. of yeah. the Hudson. And out there, it used to be the USNS Comfort. It was parked right outside. It was gorgeous. Oh, the hospital ship. Yeah, yeah the hospital ship. Um, so it's been a blessing. I'm here. I drive my car 50 minutes to see my family. I'm very fortunate in that, that I can do that, too. And I, I wave at them from the yard and hang out with them as if it were a cookout. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, how did, what's, the, what's the Kenny Howard, uh, Robin DeHaste's connection? We met through Yvette Kojic. Um, yeah. We were doing From Broadway with Love, Sandy Hook, but I left to go direct this horrible reading in the Philippines. <laughs> so I was <laughs> at the event, even though I produced it. And so Yvette met him and knew that I was a big fan, and we met and just, I don't know, just started see each other. Oh, because I was trying to figure out why it is he, because I, you will remember this, but I met you at a cocktail party at Kenny's uh, yes. house kitchen condo. As one and, did. Um, but I have to say, I don't recall that little white tuft of hair. On oh, my God. Head, but, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I'm, like I'm ready. I'm ready to play MAME now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm somewhere between 40 and death. <laughs> 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 yeah, that didn't exist. But I got to say, Kenny, when we met, that time period was so beautiful because that concert was so necessary. And I'm from Connecticut. Um, so when, when, when the Newtown Massacre happened, it, it truly was def devastating for our community. And, and that concert was, was so beautiful to be a part of. And, and I'm so happy that, you know, we, we got to form friendships from that. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I just want to jump right in because there's a lot to get yeah. through. I have a lot of questions. Um, I saw Camp in Boston, I think it, in its first release, I was on vacation and I knew about it. And so I, I went and there were, we went in a matinee. There were probably six people there. I fell in love with the, it was early. It was a matinee. That's not like. Well, honey, boo boo kitty. The, it was like, there were a lot of people going to see that movie in the movie But theater. Orlando's really bad about getting independent films sometimes. And so mm -hmm. it was like two or three weeks later, but I came back. I'm like, oh my God, we gotta go see this show camp. And then when it finally was here, we all went. And I have to say, you know, 
you know the Fringe Festival is, yeah? Uh, yeah. Also, the Orlando has one of the biggest ones. And um, I do an arts newsletter, and I never promote anything but the Fringe Festival during the Fringe Festival. And um, it, your camp opened here in Orlando just at the start of the Fringe Festival. And I went, to tech, Kenny told me I had to see it. And so I, I went, and then I carried on about it so much at the beer tent at the Fringe Festival that I ended up getting up like a group of 20 people and took Aww. them away from the festival, and we all went to see it. Okay. Well, listen. Alana, if you're out there, I'm sorry. It, when, when you open a movie with, hey, do we know each other? Yeah, we were in Night Mother together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that's, yeah when you start yeah. with a reference like that. It's a, yeah. it's a niche market, so we have mm -hmm. to support one another. And we use that that joke now as a test to see whether or not someone's like worthy enough to spend time investing in a friend. <laughs> don't understand that joke. Forget it. <laughs> well, I love it. Okay. Well, that was a fun trip down memory. Okay. So, but I just wanted to ask you, like, what was what led you to that moment? How did you get to camp to the audition? Camp was was almost a, a, a default in a way. Like it, it was very unexpected. I always wanted to pursue a career in musical theater, but I was told by my teachers that opera was the way to go for me. I had one specific teacher who, who would say to me, "Robin, you're short and you're Puerto Rican. You'll never make it in musical theater. Go to opera where they don't care what you look like." And at the time, oh my god, yeah. But but at the time, I. I just thought that, that they knew what they were talking about and that I had to listen to those voices. And so I was gonna pursue opera. I didn't feel passionate about it. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't, it wasn't the true love. And then when I was working at a, at a musical theater summer camp as a counselor, the woman who ran it had been one of my biggest advocates in theater all the years leading up to that. And she found out about the auditions for the movie because there was an open call, excuse me, I got excited. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and I, I went into a random open call. It was American Idol style. It was like 700 of us. We just got cattle called in. We we had to sing. I think it was like 16 bars a cappella, and I did that. And then from that, I got a call back with like three scenes and a dance call. And it was like a week and a half of super intense auditions where they narrowed it down. And I ended up booking that role. And we didn't know what it was gonna be. You know, we we for us it was a non-union independent film. And the only thing that let us know that it, it had the potential to grow was that Danny DeVito was one of the producers on it. Oh. And so that, that was the, the only clue that we had. It and was then, probably him who got you in because he felt bad for the short guy. Exactly, exactly. He was like, he's a little one like me. Let him in, let him in. <laughs> no, but, but when we got to Sundance, because they, they sped up the editing process for the movie, and we got to Sundance, we shot in September and we were in Sundance in January. So it was oh. fast. And when we got to Sundance, you have to understand that these festivals are infested with sappy ass movies. Everyone <laughs> wants to have their big dramatic thing and there's like all these heavy themes. And we came in with what I lovingly call abundant faggotry and joy. <laughs> <laughs> There's some trash. I'm writing that yeah. down. I'm and there, there is, but ultimately, it's like we're more Jerry Herman than Stephen Sondheim in that sense when you're in a festival, you know? Yeah. And I think the festival needed that. And I love me some Sondheim. But we needed more Jerry Herman at, at Sundance that year. And so we got really popular because everyone was just happy to, to, like, in the middle of their day, get some respite and see a movie that was fun and happy. And I think that's when the producers realized, wait, there's a bigger audience here than, than, than we've realized. And there wasn't initially. It was years there later is. when that cult fan base came into play. Huh? And we watch it more than you would know. And to everybody yeah. else, if, if you haven't seen it, it's the 2004 movie Camp. And it is absolutely a must-see for theater people the way Waiting for Guffman is. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And there may be a life for it in the future, just side note. Oh. Uh, I, I, I was teased about yet. that. Like Broadway was, musical future? Not musical. There was supposed to be a movie, and then I heard there's, I heard that that got changed to a potential TV show. All right. You yeah. hear it her. You hear it her first. <laughs> You're hearing it here first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I just want to jump into now the, mm -hmm. the Broadway. Um, you've been on Broadway five times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 
out of the five, how many times have you originated a role? Three. And how many Tony nominations did you get? <laughs> <laughs> Three. We know. <laughs> so that ain't so bad. <laughs> I'm a pretty um, girl, Mama. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna skip over rent. <laughs> I'm gonna skip over rent just because it's it's rent and um, but going in trying to bring people down in the heights <laughs> was your first the first role. And so, can you tell me what it was like to work with Lynn? Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, it was the best. I always say I, I I was fortunate enough to have two Broadway debuts because that debut in Rent replacing was one experience, but then. The debut originating was a whole nother experience. Um, with I still remember the first day I met Lynn. The first time I ever met Lynn was at rehearsal for the workshop of Heights. And I had had this running joke with my friends, which this would this would not fly now, by the way. I used to, within a few minutes of beating people as a joke, I'd go, wanna make out? <laughs> and so one <laughs> So I'm Lynn to this day says. Oh my God! Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta be careful though. But with Lynn, one of the first things I ever said to him was, "Do you want to make out?" And and he laughed. He cackled. I think the first thing he asked me was, "What happened to the hair?" Because he had only seen me in camp before. And when I first did a reading of Heights, I buzzed my hair much like I did now, like I do now. Um, and he was like, "What happened to the hair?" I said, "I just I was feeling it, you know." But he was always so so sweet and so kind and so joyous. And I didn't, I don't know what happened when I met him. I didn't fully piece together that he wrote the show and was going to star in it. So then when we, when we started the first reading, it was a cold read. And he sang every part because we hadn't learned the music. And it was just like we were all experiencing this epiphany at once of like, no one is ready for this man. No one is ready for this story or for this voice. It was it was it was a communal gag. Yeah, absolutely, I agree with yeah. that. Um, then you went on to Lacage, which I saw, and I you were absolutely amazing. I saw you in, in you. the Heights as well, but Lacage was great. And then you went into Wicked, right? Uh, Lacage. Yes, 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 yes. Correct. Yes. And you were in it for, what, a year on Broadway and a year on tour? I did, like, a little over a year on Broadway and a year on, on the road. And and that that was actually so good for me because, you know, I, I hadn't worked in a few years on Broadway after Lodge. I had been very, very intentional and specific about the work that I, that I wanted to do. And when I turned 30, I realized I need to make money. And... <laughs> And it, 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 it's such a privileged thing for me to be able to say that I went into that show to like make a paycheck, but that that was my reasoning. You know, it's always an honor to be a part of a show with that much le of, of, a, of a legacy, but that was, that, was, that was what happened. But then I got there and I got so much more out of that show than I ever expected. Because one of the things that you have to be conscious of in a long running show is, is you don't know what the work culture is gonna be like. You don't know there's everyone's mood is affected because everyone's marinating together every day, you right. know? And and so long running shows have their ups and downs in terms of when the buildings are happy and when they are negative. And when I got there, it was such a positive workspace. The way that they prepared me to go into that show, there was no there were no blind spots in that put in process before my first performance. I was very You were Bach, correct? I was Bach, yes. And I remember you know, you always, you're always concerned with, with feeling like you have to act within certain parameters because the role's not originated by you. But I felt so creatively free in that show. I, I really felt like I saw the space within the parameters and, and I was able to save money. And, and when I finished the show, I was able to go work regionally and go work off Broadway and do the roles that were challenging me in the ways that New York City wasn't. Cause I was trying to play against the the type, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and then right before the year before Boys in the Band, I knew Boys in the Band was coming in. And there was a spot on the on the road. I filled in for an emergency and I ended up staying the rest of the year. Um, and I had never toured before. So it was a great way for me to see the country. 
for wow. me to. So did uh, your bop yeah. have a Puerto Rican accent? No, you know what's funny though, because whenever I saw that show, whenever I saw that show, I, I to me it existed in a anachronistic world where who who knows what time it's in, you know? Right. And and then when I got there, they were sticklers that you had to remove anything that sort of gave away the present right. because they wanted it to exist in sort of a timeless era. Uh, so it took me a minute and there were certain words, especially in the scenes where Bach gets really, gets really passionate, where I would find, I would find my, like, my Puerto Rican en energy coming out. <laughs> um, so, you know, I had to like, you know, put on my, uh, I had to do the, the, the code switch. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. So yeah. you said boys in the band. That was an amazing experience. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah. And boys in the band movie. was Yes. Uh Boys in the Band was like it was the bomb. It was it was one of those things where when I when Joe asked Joe Mantel was the director and he reached out to me randomly to do a reading of it. And it was just a straight up offer. And wow. oh. what's crazy is I really, really, I give Lori Metcalf for that happening because I, I did a play with her at Lincoln Center a couple years ago, a few years ago, and I was doing a, a one-man show on Sunday night. So I'd finish the eighth show of the week on Sunday, the matinee, and then I'd run downtown to the duplex, the gay bar, and I would do a 70-minute monologue. And Joe saw me do both those, those shows within two weeks. So Joe knew that I had the fluidity uh, of being able to do plays and musicals. And Lori's the one that brought him to both of those shows. So I, I always give her credit for that. Oh, he cast funny. me in Boys in the Band. Yeah, and I think, and and, he, and Joe vetted me too. He asked around, you know, if I was a, a nice guy. And uh, <laughs> and so, so be nice guys. Cause it, but yet it, you it, still got it. And I, and I, <laughs> and we have a movie to look forward to, correct? It, what <laughs> happened? We have a movie to look forward to, correct? Yes, correct. But he, the, the show was great. The cast was great. Working with him was wonderful. I feel like it is arguably maybe the best work that I've ever done in my career in that play. The, the movie itself, I can't wait to see what it looks like. Shooting it was a blast. I think every movie should have a run on Broadway before you shoot it. You save a lot of yeah, time, yeah, but you also yeah. have a lot more fun. Absolutely. Right, yeah. So there's also another movie. I know you can't talk about it really <laughs> much at all, but um, it's, no. it's a, a Jonathan Larson. Could you? It's tick tick boom, people. It's tick tick boom. It's that, 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 that you can say it's out there. Yeah, tick, I know. Tick, I saw boom. it on IMDb. I saw yeah, so I, you know what I can say tell about us what it you is, can. This what is I can say is that Lin Manuel Miranda is directing it, that uh, it stars Andrew Garfield, myself, Alexandra Ship, Vanessa Hudgens, and Joshua Henry, and um, and that's about it. <laughs> okay. well, <laughs> there you go. Well, or I, I guess like I can I can say this: it's always a joy to work with Lin again and to work with Joshua Henry again. I have a feeling you'll work with them a lot more as well. Well, unfortunately, we are coming to the end of our time. Before yes. we say goodbye, is there anything that you would like to tell the people watching? Uh, you know what's funny is I, I've been getting asked this question a lot lately, and the thing that keeps coming up for me is that this quarantine period is really frustrating, and it brings up feelings of powerlessness and, and feeling very, very stifled. Uh, but... I don't think anyone's supposed to take this time to write their big, wonderful play or to, to like put pressure on themselves to do all the things they said that they were that they wanted to do with their lives. But I do think this time would be wasted if we did not come out of it with a lot more gratitude and a lot more positive choices. Because if anything, we have the time now to finally work on ourselves in a way that we haven't for a very long time. So make it count in that sense. Perfect. Very nice. Very nice. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and guys, also, I just want to say, Subtlety make here. sure, I know I, I'm horrible, I, did, I, I, I just, I don't, look at me, guys, but honestly, make sure, going along with what I said, there's so many people that, that are in need right now, and there's so many places to give where people can get resources from, so please donate to the URL right underneath here, because it, it really does help a lot of people who are in, in need. Thank you. 
Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. And I hope to get up to New York as soon as it opens again. Word. Thank you so Same. much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care, y'all.